Hello my convicts, convict catch, this is Zadok Convict bringing you guys and gals in another video. So people have been asking for a little bit of help with the VR stuff because they're still struggling with it, especially with Steam VR and getting Steam Link to work. So I'm going to go and talk you through everything you should be doing first and hopefully this helps people out because I know people have been stuck trying to use this application and so on and so forth. Anyway, so here we go. So first of all, what you need to do obviously is install steam so make sure you go to your browser install steam i'm assuming most people know how to do this already so all you need to do is go and install steam once that's installed and out the way which will look obviously like this then we can go on to the next one and this is obviously steam here so this is what steam looks like as you can see we're going to move steam out of the way for just a moment let me get rid of that as well we're going to go to the browser and you want to go to these two pages. I'll put these in the description below. But people are asking also, how do I install new drivers for my GPU? So this is how you do it. So basically, in the description for NVIDIA, so if you're on a GeForce graphics card, then you want to come here to this one. If you're on a Radeon uh, AMD graphics card, you want the other page, which I'll put in the description as well. So for the first one, you go here, you click on download. You want to then download and they'll download the latest driver for you and then just save it onto your desktop. And that's all you need to do. On AMD, just basically again, just click on download Windows drivers and they'll download the latest driver for you as well. And that's all you need to do in order to get that to work. So I'll put these in the description so you can obviously have these latest ones and just go and install them. Very, very simple and easy and then once you've got that done then you'll be good to go on that front so once you've done that and you've got them up to date and it's gone through it's completed the whole process then we can go back to steam so let me get rid of that and now open up steam so to get steam and steam vr you basically come here to the store you want to type in the word steam vr and that will bring you here now you can see the top one here is steam vr is the one that we want just move a bit further down till you get to the green one and it will say for you install for me it just says play because i've already got it installed on the system you just want to click install and let this install once it's completed the install it will probably also restart or ask you to restart your steam application so you'll need to close down steam and then reopen steam so close down Steam and then reopen your Steam and then it'll bring you back up to where you need to be and you should have Steam in your library you should be able to go here and type in Steam and it'll look like this here like this little icon here once you've done that then that's the first part of Steam on there then you want to go over here to Steam click on settings you want to come down then to where it says remote play and you want to then follow along with this so first of all you want this to be on so you want it to be checked so it's on this will basically give you a connection between your pc and your quest excuse the sunlight if it's bright but uh hey hell it'll do you want to then pair your steam i'm going to unpair my device uh for now and then it's now going to obviously for you say this no devices but you can pair steam link so click on pair steam link and it'll give you an authorized device now what you need to do is put on your headset and then we can go through that part so let me bring up this um casting so you can see exactly what i'm doing so obviously make sure you're in a space where your vr works so you go into vr as you can see here and you want to Let me just get rid of this just two moments. Let me just exit out of this for now. Come on, pick up my controllers. What's over here? What are you doing? Let me quit it for two moments. There we go. So, with that, we want to click on the Steam link. You want to install what? Well, let me go through the process first. Let me cancel that. So, go to your store. You want to then type in Steam Link, like it says up there. You want to search for Steam Link, and Steam Link is here. You want to click on Steam Link, and it'll say install. Uh, you might have to click into it and then install it. If not, you can do it from here and click install. 
and it'll install Steam Link. Once you've installed Steam Link and it's completed, you should get it pop up in here and you can see the application for Steam Link up here once it's completed. So you click on Steam Link, that will then do this. And then once you've got through, it will then look for a device. It will pick up your device. If you've got any issues, what I would probably do is get a USB to uh, USB-C, so USB cable to USB-C, or if you've got a PC that supports USB-C to USB-C, uh, then obviously do that. Basically, USB, USB to USB-C is like a, a PlayStation cable where it's USB on one side and it's Type-C for like a mobile phone on the other side. Plug that into the side of your headset and it should pick up and it should tell you what your PC is, which you can see mine is called this. Click on it so it highlights and then click on connect and then it'll start to do this. Now, once it's done this, it will then give you a code it wants you to put in. You go back to your Steam application, which I'll do now. So if I move this out the way, so go back to Steam application and then it'll give you this number and they'll say you need to input this number. So the number is 5912 for me. It'll be different for you. So type that in and then press enter. And then once you've done that, it will pair you on your Steam application. And now if I pick up my controller and press continue, it should automatically then go to throw me into VR, which you can see it's doing now with Steam Link. So this is basically how you do it. And there you go. We're in, we're in Steam. We're in Steam here. Simple as that. So that's completed. So once you've done your graphics card, you've installed on the PC, you've installed in your headset, and then you've done the pair bit, you've clicked on pair, you've typed in the number, which you type in obviously on Steam when it pops up because it'll give you a pop-up once you click on that pair. And then obviously you just read the code that you get from here. Again, if you have any issues uh, getting your PC to show up, maybe put like a cable into your headset for a moment a type C into your headset, type B into your PC or type C to type C, whatever it is you normally wire your headset to your PC and if you're going to play VR, do that way. And uh, then once you've done that, click on the, the PC and then that should throw you in automatically into VR and then you'll have this hub and then obviously you'll have different games and stuff. So once you've done that, I'm going to get this out the way. Oh, we're on here. Oh, we're still on this other screen. Okay. You should get also this little box here as well, which is the Steam VR client. This is what you normally get uh, when you, you're playing Steam and you can click on these lines here and it'll give you a list of all these different options and stuff. You can even do it where you can click on display VR view and it'll give you another view of what your headset's actually seeing in real time. If you want to obviously have it, where you can see it and getting it projected from your headset. If you don't want that, just click the three lines, click it again so it disappears. I normally use Developer Hub, to be honest, to do mine, so I don't normally have that one open. So click that one, get rid of it, and then this will leave you with these other options here. So these options, all you need to do is follow along. So once you've paired, and obviously it's paired, you can see what your headset is. If you get any issues, unpair it and repair it again and try that. Go to allow direct IP sharing. I'll leave it as automatic so it's enabled. Turn this on, so and advanced host options. You can play audio from host, so basically that means you'll play audio from your headset directly from your PC. I'm going to probably take this one on because I do want it to do that. Change desktop resolution to match the streaming client. So this basically is going to get it to match. Same as what I've just shown you previously with the uh, little pop-up from the VR box, which was that little uh, shorter version of the um, screen, not like 1920 by 1080, but the, the vertical, more like mobile sort of um, angle on there. Um, dynamically just capture res res resolution to improve performance. This just basically means that it will dip resolution if your Wi-Fi is not very good or your connection goes a bit. It will then obviously reduce your quality. 
uh, use NDFBC capture on NVIDIA GPU. I don't know what that is, but I've got it ticked because I do have an NVIDIA GPU. If you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, probably don't have this ticked. Enable hardware encoding. This just basically means using support from your GPU to encode. That means obviously the image from your headset to the PC and vice versa. If you're playing on you, you know, if you're just playing, that's important. Um, if you're streaming as well, obviously it might help towards that as well. Enable hardware encoding. Enable hardware encoding on the NVIDIA. There's an AMD and there's an Intel. Choose whichever. I don't think it really matters if you've got them all ticked because it'll only use whichever one it's available at that time. I've got all mine on, but I only have an NVIDIA. I don't even have an iGPU and I don't have AMD. So just whatever. I, I think having them all on doesn't make a difference. I've not had any issues from my side by having it on. Leave this as automatic. Prioritize network traffic. You might want to do this only if you've got a high-end router. If you haven't, you may end up with some issues on there, so make sure that this is unticked if you've not got a high-end router. Your advanced client options. This will improve performance streaming a game running on another computer. Try reducing a game's resolution or adjusting those settings. So this one, I'm wondering if it means like a like like a separate PC. I don't know, but I've got it ticked anyway. Completely up to you if you want. You can try it on and off. Uh, you'll also get these other options here where you can choose what kind of quality you want. You can have enhanced 4K, 1080, or default. Complete up to you, depending on the strength for your PC. And then you've got these two options of HEVC, which is a better version of kind of like what OBS uses when you're streaming. So streaming the video quality will do it in a much better quality than 264. Oh, I thought Rio was coming out. Rio was on. No, it's not time yet. So yeah, that um, that's all you need to do, and that's it. So once you've done that, then you should be good. There should be no issues at all. If you're having issues after that. I really don't know what it could be. Um, all I can suggest is maybe having a look around some forums and seeing if anyone else has had a similar issue. It should be just as simple as that. I've looked through different like pages and stuff to find out a lot of uh, a lot of the light literature saying that the error two hundred, which I could probably show you here, like um, quest link. Error 200. Where it says the host not responding. Um, Okay. So if you have any issues, come through and type this in because this will definitely give you help in terms of anyone, you know, someone having the um, issue of host not responding. So this one, they've had a running Steam link on Quest 2. Everything runs fine, but after 15 seconds, the Steam becomes low, freezes, frames significantly cuts, then looping error code 200. Host, host not responding, try restarting Steam VR when it says error resolved on go back to a couple of seconds of the choppiness and then continue cycle of those errors. Let me just uh, plug this in while I'm here because I don't want my crust to turn off. Um, so these are like some of the things that people add. This obviously like a newer version. Um,
Let's have a look, see if there's anything else in here. Someone found a fix here. So I think someone talked to me about a Lenovo. Uh, but they've apparently found a fix if you're using a, a, a Lenovo Vantage. Make sure to disable network boost. So if you're on a Lenovo Vantage, make sure to disable network boost. Um, yeah, so if you're on a Nova, make sure you disable the boost, the network boost, because that apparently causes issues. Uh, just seeing if there's anything else I can see. I can't really see any of us. Also not responding link quest to. No, I can't see anything else on there. Right. Okay. So that's it. That's all I can help you. Unfortunately, I wish I could do more, but that's as much as I can show you here. So hopefully that helps out. If it does, please like the video, subscribe if you're new, hit that notification bell. I will do more videos uh, in terms of like helping out with you finding the floor as well. So people have been having issues with them being out too short, too tall. In VR, so I'm going to go through a quick tutorial on that as well. So uh, if it does help you out, please uh, please like and subscribe. That is all I can think of. If it's anything else, all I can suggest is that either if you're using a laptop, it could be a laptop issue or maybe that specific brand. Like I said, if you're on a Lenovo, make sure you turn off that power feature, that network power feature, because that seems to be causing some issues on the on the Lenovo's. If you have a Lenovo, that might fix that as well. Anyway, salute to you all. Hopefully that helps out. And yeah, bye for now.